Welcome everybody to this uh, Laura Alliance webinar on CSMA, KRSense Multiple Access, which is the way to minimize on-air collisions with the LoRaWAN protocol. Before we start the webinar, here are housekeeping notes, so please read carefully, even if you're a frequent viewer of our webinars. So this webcast is, is running on your computer, not, not on your phone. Um, if something goes wrong, uh, with your browser, please, please press F5 to refresh everything. You can um, kind of um, configure the way your console displays, uh, specifically change the, the way the Q&A box or the video playing box on your screen. You, can, you will be able to download the webcast slides and, 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 and the playback of the webinar later. Uh, because an on-demand version will be available um, uh, 24 hours after after this webcast. You can submit your questions through the webinar in the Q&A box on your screen. We'll answer the questions uh, at the end of the webinar, and some will be answers, uh, answered during the webinar in, in the text box also. So now the speakers of today so I, I'm the moderator, uh, Olivier Seller, Technical Committee Vachier of the Laura Alliance. The first speaker is Professor Mo Lee from Nanyang Technical University of Singapore and also uh, Professor at the Hong Kong University of Science, of Technology, uh, Science and Technology. Then Amalinda Gamaj, who's a researcher at Nanyang Technical University of Singapore also. Then Geoffroy de Guibon, who's a colleague uh, of mine at Semtech, who was the CMA chair for, uh, for the Laura Alliance, uh, that task force. I, I forgot to say that Amalinda was the uh, technical editor of the, of the technical recommendation that we're going to show today. And last, uh, Jensen Yondo, who's the founder of, at Better IoT Solutions and who's been also a researcher in the past at, uh, at NTU of Singapore. So now I'm giving the floor to Professor Mo Li. Right. Um, thank you, Olivier, for the introduction. And very happy to uh, take this opportunity to introduce this uh, journey. Um, and uh, here I'm going to talk about the motivation for this integration of CSMA. Right. Um, actually, um, there have been a lot of efforts um, especially from the industry, to push forward LoRaWAN. A lot of business cases identified as well. Um, at the same time, in academia, uh, we have been also doing research, um, especially um, fundamentally improving the performance uh, of uh, LoRaWAN. Okay. And I think today we are showing an example of this joint effort of academia and industry. Um, in this uh, 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 technical recommendation. It all started from uh, around five years ago uh, when we uh, built up a test bed uh, on our campus of NTU. Um, so it serves two goals. The first is to provide a sensing platform for environment and building monitoring uh, on the campus. And on the other hand, it also serves as a test bed for trying out different technology to improve the performance of uh, LoRaWAN. Um, this is a um, 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 campus uh, network where we use three LoRa gateways to cover the area of around three um, kilo, uh, square kilometers. Um, and based on this test bed, um, we have done research um, for uh, measuring the performance of uh, LoRa um, around the about its uh, power efficiency, um, the coverage, the communication quality. So we actually had a paper about this uh, large scale measurement study. Um, and then following that, we dive into one specific issue where we want to improve the efficiency for different LoRa endnodes to access the wireless channel. So we presented our initial research in an international conference in 2020. Um, at that time, we, we termed 
this technology as LMAC, um, uh, meaning the LoRa uh, MAC protocol. And later we joined effort with Semtech and worked with Olivier to further improve this technology. And we had a publication in ACM Transactions on Central Network reporting the technology in 2023. And after that, um, we decided uh, to form up a team and then try to come up with this uh, technology recommendation. That's a brief history of uh, where we were coming from. So the focus of this uh, techno technical recommendation is at the data link layer, okay, where we've already got um, some uh, key features on the logic link control, for example, the UT cycling uh, mechanism, the ACK mechanism, et cetera. They are, however, primary interfacing with the network layer and above. But the medium axis, which interfaces with the physical layer, is still very minimal at that time. Uh, we are primarily based on Aloha. Right? Aloha is such a protocol where we don't really coordinate any um, transmission operations. Uh, end nodes, any end node, if it has packet to transmit, it just go ahead and transmit the packet on the air, which actually may lead to very low efficiency if we have a scaled network. Okay. And the primary focus of this technical recommendation is trying to bring CSMA, which is for carrier sense multiple access for LoRaWAN, basically to improve its medium access efficiency. Uh, we were talking about Aloha and a big problem about Aloha uh, many of you might already know is it may have very early throttled good put. Okay. When you increase the demand of the network, basically the traffic amount and also the scale of the network, then the Aloha will limit the good put okay. uh, because of this heavy collisions of different transmissions. Okay. And if you look at the right figure, the packet reception ratio will go down when you have more and more traffic because you, you are likely um, um, get um, into more collisions. Okay. So there have been legacy solutions to this problem, actually. Okay. For example, the uh, very classical LBT solution, which is a listen before talk. The key idea was when a node wants to transmit a frame, it will first listen to the channel. If there is any ongoing transmission, then it will withheld its transmission until the channel becomes idle. This is a very straightforward idea. And how do you actually arbitrate whether the channel is occupied? It is simply by detecting um, energy on the air. Basically, it's called RSS estimation. You are estimating whether there is any channel behavior by listening to the signal strength on the air. And it has actually been practiced in many other wireless systems like Wi-Fi. However, this approach is not suitable for LoRa, primarily for two reasons. The first reason, if you look at the left figure, the RA says we need to set a threshold, and it's very difficult to set a feasible threshold. If you make the threshold too small, then you end up with detecting a lot of channel activities, even very minimum um, interference or any energy level will lead to a busy channel, wasting a lot of transmission opportunities. But if you set the threshold too high, for example, as practice in some regions in the world, for example, Korea or Japan, when we set the RSS threshold to minus 80 or minus 60 dBm, then it ends up you can only detect very nearby LoRa transmissions. For far away LoRa transmissions, you can't detect them at all because LoRa transmissions could go very far and as a result, it could be very weak at the receiver side. Even in some cases, it can be below the noise floor. So we cannot really set a perfect threshold. And the second reason being LoRa, it's physically clear features concurrent transmissions. As when you configure your transmissions to different spreading factors, then even on the same frequency range, 
multiple transmissions can be concurrent. They are not going to interfere with each other. Spreading factor seven won't interfere with spreading vector 12. Okay. Using RSAs, however, listen before talk may actually block transmissions which could have been done without any interference. For example, detecting a spreading factor seven transmission may block any transmissions with spreading factor 12 or 11, which could have been transmitted without any loss. So because of those two reasons, we came to a different um, um, CSMA solution. Okay. So next, I'm going to hand it over to Amaninda, who is currently a researcher at NTU. Um, he will talk more about the design of this uh, LoRaWAN CSMA. Amaninda, please. Uh, thank you, Prof. Lee, for the introduction. So, as Prof. Lee earlier said, uh, this TR has been a result of a collaboration uh, between Semtech France and uh, NTU Singapore. And uh, something that's noteworthy to mention is that uh, this is the very first uh, industry academia collaboration that happened within the LoRa Alliance that resulted in a technical recommendation. And uh, with that in mind, let us go deep into the design part of the CSMA protocol. So on the screen now, you can see the physical layer of a LoRaWAN frame. Now, uh, it mostly constitutes of a series of preambles followed by a series of data chips. If we are to enable CSMA to LoRaWAN, then we need to be able to detect each of these types of chips. So the CAD module uh, that is present in all LoRa radios, it gives us an opportunity to detect either the presence or the absence of a given spreading factor and a channel combination. But um, this in itself is not really uh, sufficient to uh, enable CSMA. We want to make sure that this CAD module adheres and can do certain things and detect uh, certain variations of chips. Now, what do I mean by these variations? Let me go ahead and explain. Now, um, let's say that there is an ongoing frame in the air and a second radio turns on. Now, it could turn on at any point in time. It could turn on when, and receive a whole preamble, but it could even turn on and receive two halves of from two consecutive preambles, or it could turn on and receive a full data chip, or even two halves from two data chips. And we want the CAD module to tell us that the channel is in use under all of these scenarios. And finally, and most importantly, we also want to detect the absence of a particular spreading factor although a different spreading factor is in use. For example, if the spreading factor eight is in use, and we want to check spreading factor seven is in use or not, in that case, the CAD module would want, uh, would need to re, uh, tell us that the channel is not in use. And we tested the performance of the CAD module under all of these scenarios, and we found out that it nicely meets all of these requirements which gives us, gives us hope that it can actually be used to enable CSMA for LoRa and LoRaWAN. Now, um, secondly, the, the CAD operation consumes a significantly small amount of energy as compared to that of a transmission. So it makes sense for us to uh, enable CSMA using several CADs and actually protect the large amount of energy that we are spending on a transmission that otherwise could be wasted if it meets with a collision. And finally, we also tested the range of the CAD uh, detection. Recall from uh, what Prof Lee said that the range of LBT is <clears throat> pretty limited, at max 100 meters. However, uh, we did some tests in the university area. So NTU is about 3.5 to 4 square kilometers large. And <clears throat> based on our experiments, 
we found out that as long as a LoRa frame could be received, the CAD works as well. So we are able to successfully detect the presence of uh, the LoRa frame throughout the university using CAD as well. So with this idea in mind, we went ahead and designed a simple uh, CSMA protocol, but yet it's efficient. So let me briefly introduce this protocol. So in a nutshell, it has two, uh, two stages. So the, uh, whenever there's a pending stage, uh, it goes through two phases. First, the end device would go through the DIFS phase, followed by a back office, and then the transmission. So uh, what the DIFS phase does is that it estimates a clear channel. Um, however, simply estimating a clear channel is not sufficient. Uh, that's because the DIFS window, the DIFS phase, consumes a constant amount of time. So let's assume that if two or more nodes start the CSMA process at the same time, and they would finish at the same time. And uh, this would sort of give more collisions as, uh, in, in the network. So we add a random back off window. So right after completing the DIFS phase, an end device would spin off a random number ranging from one to six, and it would decrease uh, a cat for each of this number. And then at the end of uh, the back off phase, if all the cats have been successfully finished, the frame would be uh, sent from the node. In either case, um, even uh, uh, either in the back office or in the DIFS phase, if the end device finds a potential collision, what it's going to do is that it's going to uh, change the channel to a random channel and then reset back to the DIFS state. And then it would go through the back office and the transmission. So. Uh, let us uh, go through this idea using a, a two node comparison. So here we see uh, radio A and radio B. Uh, as you can see, uh, the radio A first starts the CSMA process. It first goes through the DIFS phase. It understands that there is uh, no potential collision and then it spins off a back off number of two. It decreases these back off slots, and it as as the DIFS phase and the back off phase completed successfully, it goes ahead and sends off the transmission. However, now when the radio B starts its transmission, it does complete a successful DIFS state. However, during the second back off uh, window, it figures out that A's frame is actually in the air. So what node B does is that it reconfigures its channel to a different random channel and then resumes with the CSME operation. So specifically, it does the IFS again and decrements the rest of the back of windows and proceeds uh, to the transmission on a different channel. So this is a real example of how two nodes were earlier tuned in to the same channel spreading factor combination, but identified that there is going to be a potential collision and then reconfigured to send the transmission in such a way that no collision happened. Uh, by simply enabling this CSMA uh, protocol, uh, we can uh, have significant gains in terms of good put as well as in terms of the packet reception ratio. So um, next, I have a real demo. Uh, so the demo would uh, showcase two different spectrograms. And um, one network would have uh, CSMA enabled, and another network would not have CSMA enabled. So on the top, you can see the spectrogram of a network that has CSMA enabled. And you can see there's a nice uh, distribution across the channels. And there is a nice interframe delay between each packet such that there, it doesn't look like there's a lot of collisions happening in contrast to the bottom 
where there's a stream of frames that, that are just going under, uh, uh, under Aloha. And these networks are, per are performing at the same demand. So um, <clears throat> finally, I'd like to uh, mention that this whole CSMA protocol is configurable. Uh, there, there are some parameters that can be configured, but I would like to choose several parameters, several important parameters to describe today. So uh, one important parameter is the max changes parameter. Recall I said earlier that whenever the end device finds a collision, it goes ahead and changes the channel to a different channel. So imagine if your node is deployed in a highly contended environment. So what happens is that it would try to change the channel uh, too many times. And based on the application, um, you may not like that. So you can actually set the max changes value to, for example, six. And in this case, what happens is that after the end device tries to change the channel six times, that means it met, met with six potential collisions, it would simply default to Aloha and the frame would be sent under Aloha. And there are other parameters such as back off max that you can utilize for prioritization. And uh, for the details on this are uh, described in the technical recommendation. And uh, next, I would like to um, uh, hand over to Jeff Roy, uh, who has been the uh, chair for our CSMA task force. And he is going to present to us how to uh, deploy the LoRa LBM with CSMA. Over to you, Jeff Roy. Thank you, Amalinda. So yes, I will show you how to use uh, the, the CSMA with the LoRa basic modem. So let me share my screen and we'll uh, make a real demo. So first, we can uh, we have to go on uh, the LoRaNet uh, SWL 2001 uh, repository uh, to, to download uh, the code can keep the link here. Then you can open uh, your favorite terminal and, uh, and download the code. So yeah, I'm, I am using the git clone command and the link of the project. OK, uh, now the code is pretty here. Okay. You can go inside the project and uh, open it with your favorite editor. When you, when you arrive on the project, there is a three folder. Uh, the LBM library is where is located uh, the LoRaWAN stack uh, with the class A, B, C, with uh, all the LoRaWAN package uh, from multicast, etc., etc., and the CSMA, LBT, and uh, other uh, features. To use the LBM, we can create an example. So I will use an example already present inside the project. This example is inside main example, and it is, is the main periodical uplink. Just this example will send a uplink every five seconds after the join. So before I have to set the periodical uplink to five seconds to accelerate the demonstration, then, uh, to, to have the demonstration of uh, collision avoid, uh, I will enable a jammer uh, on my home. So I have to set the same data rate to have the probability of collision. Uh, sure, there is a to create collision. So after the join, all uplink will be sent at uh, SF10, so data, data rate 2. We have the modern adversary set profile. To, to set a specific ADR profile in a custom mode and uh, an, uh, an array of distribution. In this array, I put the number two. Two is the data rate uh, for Europe is SF10. Uh, to be sure to join uh, the network correctly, I have to set also my keys uh, inside the device in the option file. Join the network correctly. So now I will show you how enable CSMA. 
To enable the CSMA, you can go inside the LBM library, inside the make file, there is all options that you can set uh, on your compilation of your project. Here, there is two options, LBM CSMA, egal yes, and uh, use CSMA by default. LBM CSMA set to yes uh, will add the fir inside the firmware the CSMA feature because you, if, you want, if you don't want to use, you're not, uh, you, you're not obliged to, to compile it. And you can use the CSMA by default to enable this feature when the device starts. So I will copy these two options. And inside the make file of uh, my uh, application, in the option file, there is a, a flag where I can pass all flag that, I'll, uh, that I uh, will build inside the library. So here I add in the LBM build option, the LBM CSMA and the use CSMA by default. So now I am able to build correctly the, the library, so the, the firmware. So to build, I use the make command. I am, uh, I, I am using the LBM example with the LR1, LR1110 radio. And the modem app is the periodical uplink. I can build it. Then uh, at the end uh, of the compilation, I will flash it directly on my board. Flash it. I copy past the binary in, uh, from LBM example uh, and the, build, the binary file to my uh, nuclear board. We can go inside uh, my uh, power consumption measurement. Here it is the power of the radio. So we can see the, the start of the radio, the initialization of the modem. Then we can see directly here a join uh, request. Then a few seconds later, the join accept. We receive all frequency that the network uh, send, and the device is now joined. And we can see a packet every approximately five seconds. I will start my jammer now. The jammer send packet at SF10 on the frequency 868.5 uh, megahertz. If I zoom on a normal uh, transmission without uh, without uh, noise on the channel, for example here, we can see the packet wa was sent at the frequency 867.7 at SF10. You can see the CAD phase. The, there is only the DEFS enabled on this example. The backoff was not enabled. And the channel is free, so the transmission can occur. Then there is RX1 and RX2. Channels are picked randomly, so sometimes it's okay, sometimes it's not okay. Here, we can see a transmission. The, the, the channel activity detects something. There is a CAD positive. It was on the chain channel in a, on a 868.5 and SF10. So the algorithm take a new channel. This time it was 867.9. The channel is free. The transmission can be no curve, etc., etc., etc. Sometimes we can see multiple uh, cat detection because the same channel is picked. Uh, it's totally random. But at the end, if uh, all channels are always busy, the packet will be sent uh, uh, as ALOA method in best effort. So you can see it's very easy to, to enable the CSMA. So let me back to the presentation now. I will, uh, just to summarize, so you can uh, git clone the project, SLW2001. Then enable the CSMA in the app option with the LBM CSMA set to yes and uh, use CSMA by default to enable the CSMA directly inside the code. Then you have to build your example and you can flash your firmware in your target. So to summarize, we, we, if there is no jammer, uh, we can see the, the, the channel activity detection, it's okay, the transmission and RX1 and RX2. If there is a jammer, 
you can see the, the, the modem pick a new channel randomly, randomly and find a free channel and use it. About the API, it's very easy because there is a, just four API. One to get and set the parameter, the state of the CSMA because you can enable or disable it. It depends of your application. Uh, maybe you are in an area with a lot of devices and we need to use the CSMA to avoid collision and to save power consumption. But if your device is alone and you know there is no probability of collision, maybe you want to disable it to avoid the CAD as for each transmission and gain uh, and to save some power. And the other parameter is to set and get the other API is to set and get the parameters of the CSMA. You can enable or disable the back off and you can enable the number of back off procedure. And you can change also the max change of channel before send the packet if all uh, channels are busy. There is two limitations uh, actually in the LBM. The CSMA cannot be used with the LBT. So if your region wanted to use the LBT, you have to use LBT. Uh, do not try to use both. It will be probably fixed in other version of LBM, but not yet. And actually, the, this, algorithm, this algorithm support only two kinds of family radio, the LR11XX and the SX12CX. Other radio, you probably have unexpected behavior. So now I will let uh, I will let Jensen Lando uh, show you the CSMA performance. Thank you, Jeffrey. Hi, I'm Jensen from Better IoT Solutions. For the past couple of months, we have been working with NTU teams in testing and verifying CSMA performance. So in order to do that, we start with building a small test bit, which we use ten devices and connected to a, uh, to a PC and uh, which acts as a micro, uh, main controller. The main controller sends uh, some network information to end devices, such as the frame delay, data uh, duty cycles, and network distribution to, to end devices. The end devices will start transmitting and these frames will be picked up by the gateway and sent to the network server. The network server then forwards and you receive frames through the internet back to the main uh, main controller. So the main controller will accept, uh, will store and uh, the number of transmitted frames and also the number of received frames. We have compiled the results after hundreds of iterations using this test bit into a, a single uh, graph here. So looking into the graph on the y-axis, we see packet reception, uh, reception ratio which is computed using the number of received frames divided by the number of transmitted frames. So what this does is that the packet reception ratio is a very good indicator of the stability of the network. The higher the number, the, the better the stability. We have also uh, grouped the data into different data, uh, uh, different distribution of the network. We can see here 100% to 0%, 80% to 20%, 50% to 50%. This indicates the number of uh, the number of devices distribution within the network of each test. So let's take an example of 80% to 20%. It simply means that all the 10 devices, it are using CS, uh, Aloha and 20, uh, two are using CSMA. So we further group the, the data into different network distribution. Here we can see that the number of devices reaches from 3,000 to 15,000. We did this by uh, reducing the duty cycle of each devices. So we start with 10 devices. Each devices, we assume that it's transmitting one frame every 15 minutes. And if we reduce the uh, frame delay to one and a half minutes, we have we essentially emulate ten devices and so on. So looking at the data itself, we see that it, uh, an observations that Prof Lee and the team also sees, where the 
the packet reception ratio reduces as the number of devices increases. This happens because with more and more devices in the network, there are more and more transmission going on. And all of this transmission in increases the probability of collision, which leads to frame loss. However, when we look at CSMA, it's actually robust. The more CSMA devices we introduce into the network, the better the PRR. So using the data that we have, we, uh, we built a simulation tool where we can modify various parameters like number of nodes, number of channels, data rates, distributions, number of frames transmitted, and so on. So we have done thousands of simulations using this tool. We see that in all cases, CSMA always outperforms Aloha devices, and the standard deviation is also lower than the Aloha devices, meaning uh, and all the devices that is using CSMA has a better chances of getting their data delivered than standard Aloha. It also doesn't affect the standard Aloha performance if we take uh, if we uh, when we change the the distribution. So since we have a small scale test and also a simulation, we'd like to test it commercially. And to do that, we are uh, we are collaborating with a Singapore-based LoRaWAN uh, network provider called SPTEL. SPTEL uh, has network coverage of up to 70% in heartland uh, of Singapore. They have multiple use cases under their network. And we plan to have large-scale uh, device, uh, CSMA-enabled device deployed around the country to, uh, to test CSMA performance. The result will be published as a white paper uh, by SPTEL and Data IoT Solutions. So we are very excited to have uh, to start this journey with uh, Semtech and NTU. So um, I'll hand the time back to Olivia, our moderator. Thanks a lot, Jensen, and thanks to all presenters today, Professor Lee, Amalinda, Geoffroy, and, and Jensen. So we're going soon to um, come up to the Q&A, but before that, let me do some uh, advertisement for joining the Loha Alliance. So if you're not a member yet, please consider joining the Loha Alliance. Um, you will be um, uh, thrilled of all the opportunities to meet people from the uh, from the ecosystem to grow your, your Loha One business, collaborate with companies. It's it's really a way to influence uh, or keep up to date with the standards that we are producing, just like just like this one. Uh, there is a strong uh, regulatory support, for instance, um, satellites or uh, country by country regulatory support and, and, and applicability, applicability of LoRa One to, to each um, region. So that's um, that's really a, a good benefit. You also have access to a pre-certification testing tool that allows you to um, verify that your device is compliant before you bring that device to the um, certify, certifying test house. So that's, that's really a, uh, many benefits of becoming a member. Um, our next uh, big event will, be, will take place in June in uh, Munich, Germany. So this is a two-day public event with uh, keynotes, uh, panel discussion, live demonstration, and, uh, and also a marketplace with innovation and, and, and a poster session for uh, papers. It's really the, uh, the place to, to discover uh, Laura One, to grow your network, to grow your business, and to find solutions and find partners. So you can click that image to, uh, to, to register to that event, which is uh, in June uh, on the 19th and 20th, uh, 2024 in the very nice city of Munich, Germany. So I would like also to um, talk about the uh, Loha One Accredited Professional Program. That's that's a program that, that we designed for um, engineers, consultants, uh, or anyone who want to prove, demonstrate professionally that that is is skilled in Loha One. So 
you you should go to that to that uh, link to discover the program, and that's once you pass the exam, you'll be able to have um, industry recognition, peers recognition. You'll be proud of that and be able to show that on your on your resume. So that's a proven qualification uh, that's that's going to expand your your opportunities as a as a professional. So. With that, I finished the uh, advert advertising uh, section, and we can now go uh, finally to the uh, Q&A section. So let's start with the uh, recap of some questions that have been answered uh, by Geoffroy already. So Geoffroy, what is the availability of CSMA on the various uh, stacks and chips? Hello, yeah, hello. yes, actually the, um, the CSMA algorithm is developed only for, um, for the LoRa basics modem. Uh, I don't know if there is um, something for the for their stack, but today it's only for the LoRa basic modem. Uh, and for the chip, uh, it's only for a new radio, uh, so the X612.6X or the LR11XX. Uh, due to the the behavior is different to to configure the radio, so today we concentrate our energy on the new radio. But it's not possible. It's not impossible to to work for the for the older radio. Okay, thank you, Geoffroy. So another very interesting question is um, uh, from Adrian Bruin. Wouldn't a polite device implementing CSMA be at a disadvantage if it is surrounded by rude devices implementing Aloha? So that that question is for uh, I think Christian can answer that question. Yeah, so um, as we have tested with actual uh, testbed and also simulations, it appears that with more and more devices, actually the uh, the uh, uh, PRR or the uh, packet reception ratio stabilize or improve even. So uh, apparently uh, we first, uh, it comes as a surprise. We first thought that uh, it's going to be uh, Aloha dominating the CSMA, but apparently not. Um, but for the CSMA mandatory, maybe uh, Olivia, Olivia, you can answer this. Yes. Yeah, so, um, so we're just starting with CSMA. Um, first, we need to deploy that new technology, but you can all see it is very prom promising. So maybe uh, it's going to be mandatory once we realize it's uh, it's good. And it's also good news what you just said, Christian, that um, it's actually in the advantage of the of any end device. To, uh, to turn on CSMA, uh, maybe because it can find uh, automatically the right time to, to talk without collisions. Um, uh, then there's question, uh, another question. Is the CSMA scheme available for Class B and devices? I'm going to take this one um, for a question from uh, Shekra El Ferry. So this, um, the two are somehow Unrelated, uh, uh, in a way, because um, CSMA applies to uplink transmission and Class B only matters for downlink transmissions. However, the LoRa basic modem stack is, is, is completely capable to handle schedule transmission and schedule reception uh, from the radio. So that's so the answer is yes, it's available. It's it's almost some unrelated in the standard, but in the radio. And the same radio is shared, and a LoRa basic modem can can handle that. Um, next question is: Is there any loss of sensitivity while using while using CSMA? So um, maybe Amalinda, you want to answer this one? Actually, uh, a CAD is as sensitive as a LoRa radio receiving a, a standard LoRa frame. So there is no reduced sensitivity when it comes to uh, CSMA. Okay. Um, so the 
Next question is uh, also from Sheikh Khalifa. If I may add, uh, of yeah. course. Yes. Yeah, go on, Christian. Um, apparently, we when we look at the sensitivity, um, because there is no pollution uh, transmitting. Um, uh, during transmission, there is no collision. Uh, actually, it, it it improved. Okay. Um, uh, you, you need to get a little bit, uh, maybe it's on my side. Um, and anyway, let's go to the next question. Uh, did we evaluate the performance of the new scheme in terms of energy consumption for a large scale, uh, so for a large group of devices? So maybe Geoffroy, you, you have an answer to that? And if you don't, uh, uh, yeah. The power consumption is a little bit increased uh, for each transmission uh, because you have uh, uh, you use the radio uh, a little before each transmission. But this will avoid to retransmit the full message in case of collision. So it will depend of uh, of your environment. If there is very lot of devices in the same area, we will avoid a lot of collision. So it, you will save power to avoid to retransmit your data. But if your device is alone uh, in a big area, uh, you probably want to disable this feature because you will never have collision. So you don't need to, 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 to consume this power for each uh, channel, activity, channel activity detection. Yeah, but uh, the um, increase in power consumption is relatively um, moderate because it's, uh, it's a little bit of receive compared to a, a long transmission time. So it's a few percent more, maybe. Uh, Power increase, or, or even less than a few percent. Do you have an estimate, Geoffroy? Uh, I, I don't have exactly the, the number in, uh, in my head, but uh, uh, it's uh, ju just few symbol. Uh, in SF10, mm -hmm. if you have a full symbol, it's uh, four multiplied by uh, 32 milliseconds. But the transmission could be take two seconds. So you have two seconds compare uh, 32 by multiplied by four milliseconds. But the transmission is uh, around 30 milliamp, but uh, the CAD is uh, like a reception, so it's a very, very less. It's 20 times times on the, for the time on air and five times for the power consumption, so that's 1%. Um, and uh, may I add on, then, on, uh, there is a bit of a comparison in our TR itself and the appendix. For energy consumption. Okay, yes, exactly. So, so we so, yeah. so we can review. We, we have the answer to that question in the TR. Okay. Um, next question uh, from Jonas Jensen. Great work. Thank you. Would it be feasible to extend the work to solve coexistent issues with other technologies? For instance, uh, detect periodic jamming interference from RFID, wireless and boost, etc. So. Amalinda, maybe you have uh, an opinion? Yes. Um, so currently the CAD can detect only LoRa transmissions. And uh, so for this reason, it is not sensitive to other technologies. And, uh, and CAD, uh, actually LoRaWAN LoRa CSMA is also not a replacement for LDT. So, uh, so if Sensing other technologies in, is important, uh, then different LBT needs to be enabled based on RSS. Yeah, so to detect other technologies, uh, we need to use LBT, listen before talk. Uh, it's, um, LBT is not as sensitive nor as selective as uh, CSMA, as CAD is, but um, that's probably the only way forward. I, I mean, any other technology is, is, um, works with a positive signal to noise ratio and only LoRa is different, uh, which is capable of detecting and, trans and, and operating below the noise floor. And that's the reason why CSMA is, uh, is very specific to, 
Um, then another question: What period for the CAD would it be per CAD cycle or the packet transmission time? So I think we answered that already, but maybe uh, Amalinda, you can tell again what the duration of the CAD is going to be. Um, sorry. So uh, uh, may I know the question again? Yes. What is the periodicity of the CAD, or maybe the duration? Right. Uh, so before transmitting a frame, we have a DIFS window uh, and an optional back office. So the DIFS window will consist of two CADs, and the optional back-off window can have random number of CADs ranging from one to six. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question from Offer Kraus. Is, is it influenced by the distribution of spring factors? So, so I guess the performances or the per operation, or they're influenced by the SF distribution. For instance, if most of the packets are SF12, so maybe Christian, you have a, you can answer this one. Give me a second. Yeah, so um, for, for uh, spraying factor, it uh, the the uh, CAD actually is very selective. So um, if the transmission is mostly SF12, then it only uh, if uh, avoid SF12s, um, and uh, the CAD or CSMA actually happens uh, prior. Uh, what happens is that the the device has to first select a channel and then a, a spreading factor, then uh, perform the CSMA. Uh, once the uh, the device is able to make sure to ensure that the channel is clean, then it transmits. So um, the transmission of uh, SF12 and uh, uh, will be uh, cleared up in a way that uh, if there is a lot of tra transmission in SF SF12 SF7. Uh, uh, if there is a lot of transmission, transmission of SF12 is um, the noise is minimized because there's not that many collisions that happens. Okay, thank you, thank you, Christian. The next question from Benoit Ponsard, um, uh, who, who reminds us that the usual CSMA is efficient when there is no hidden node. So uh, the question is, what about the hidden node problem in our implementation of CSMA? So we have. We have had many discussions on that, and I let uh, Amalinda answer. So um, there are two types of hidden terminals that we've uh, we've seen. One type is the, the the standard hidden terminal, and the other one is the exposed terminal. Uh, however, we have completed extensive experiments and understood that uh, these whatever these these kind of rare cases uh, do not outweigh the benefits, the large benefits that we can gain by enabling CSMA in the network. So we can gain more than uh, like close to 90% of PRRs simply by enabling CSMA. So uh, yes, we could have hidden terminals. Um, however, uh, it's possible that you know two nodes just simply transmit their frames, although they would not be able to sense because of a hidden terminal. But this is uh, not a very frequently occurring case, and uh, for this reason, the benefit that you get by enabling CSMA in a large scale for your network is significantly large. Yeah. So indeed, the, uh, as, as you just said, uh, they are hidden nodes, of course, but. It's just working a little bit less well because of the Indian nodes, but it's still working better than doing nothing. And then the fewer the Indian nodes, the better. That's, uh... um, next question from uh, Mark Scher. Uh, what about CSMA for the gateway downlinks? So I'm going to take this one. 
um, it's um, so th this uh, technical recommendation is a first step with uplinks that absolutely this can be applied to downlinks this can also be applied to uh, the relay operation the um, wake on radio protocol would also benefit from CSMA in cases where many devices try, try to reach uh, the same relay or the same group of relays. So yes, we can expand th that CSMA principle to uh, more LoRaWAN traffic. But that's, that's I mean, that's again, uh, future work. Um, another question from Thierry Toulolan. Any comments uh, with regards to mixing CSMA with uh, NB trans uh, greater than one, so a retransmission of frames, or uh, the use of confirmed frames? So, I mean, from a protocol, I'm also going to take this one. From a protocol point of view, there's nothing uh, preventing mixing them both. Each, each retransmission, each transmission of the same frame will have to try well, to, to, to undergo the CSMA procedure, and it will transmit whenever the channel is free, and it's just going to repeat that on a different channel. Um, it's important to note that CSMA, when there is a detection of a collision, automatically changes, switches the frequency of, trans, of, of potential transmission, so that's going to work fairly well with, with repetition, because repetition also change frequency. So there's no there's no real um, impact. And the same applies to confirm frames. Um, the, the, the acknowledgement will, will come synchronous to the transmission. So it's, it's only when the transmission leaves the end device that the timing for the downlink is set. question from Chick and, and and we only have a couple of questions. We, we have plenty of questions to answer. Sorry, we will not be able to answer everyone. The question from Shekha al Ferry. Uh, literal proof that schedule-based schemes, for instance TDMA, are more efficient in terms of energy consumption and uh, packet delivery ratio in case of large large-scale net networks. So why did we choose to apply CSMA to, to improve PDR uh, and, and consumption instead of TDMA. So, Amalinda. Yes. So, uh, that's a good question. Uh, TDMA in the uh, in the literature has has shown good results, but imagine your LoRa uh, LoRaWAN network having net devices from a large uh, different people. Like, um, you know, uh, it's difficult to keep all of them synchronized. Sometimes these devices are almost always in deep sleep. So TDMA requires some sort of synchronization. And the current way that we have gone about enabling CSMA for LoRaWAN does not require a synchronization as such. So that's the reason that uh, we haven't gone in that way. OK. And maybe the last question for today um, from Arvin Deby. For Class C devices, that's the Chances of collision. Uh, do the chances of collision uh, are the chances of collision higher uh, compared to class A to a class A device? So uh, maybe Geoffroy, you you can answer this one. Uh, actually, this uh, this algorithm of CCMA is only for the uplink. Uh, class C is for the downlink. So. I'm not sure, but uh, <laughs> maybe when there is an algorithm gateway side, it can be avoid collision for class C, but uh, to, due to the, org the orthogonality of the uplink and downlinks, class A and class C should not uh, collide. We could, however, say that since class C is trying to receive whenever it's not receiving, when you're doing um, when you when when the device is going to do CAD, it's not going to try to receive class C. So it's um, 
the CSMA yes. operation would slightly reduce the class, the number, the number of class C opportunities, the time that the class C can can stay on. But again, this will be handled uh, completely seamlessly. This this um, access to the radio by LoRa basic modem, which is designed to. Um, so, thank you to. So we, we are at the end of the uh, of this Q and A. We are at the end of this webinar. Thank you to all the attendees. Thank you also to the uh, attendees that will watch this uh, the replay of the of this webinar. Thank you to our presenters, Geoffroy, Professor Molly, Amalinda, and Christian. So thank you everyone. Thanks again. I hope that you enjoyed this uh, this webinar and uh, that you uh, appreciate the. The, the value of, of CSMA. Thank you very much.